Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another StoryCraft. I'm Miss Emily. And did you know that beginning tomorrow, September 15th, it is National Hispanic Heritage Month? Well, it is. It's kind of an unusual one. It goes from September 15th to October 15th. But I thought with today's book and craft, we could celebrate that. So today's book is called Maybe Something Beautiful, How Art Transformed a Neighborhood. And of course, I have a craft that, that corresponds with my book. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Maybe Something Beautiful, How Art Transformed a Neighborhood, written by F. Isabel Campoy and Teresa Howell, and illustrated by Rafael Lopez. In the heart of a gray city, there lived a girl who loved to doodle, draw, color, and paint. Every time she saw a blank piece of paper, Mira thought to herself, hmm, maybe. And because of this, her room was filled with color and her heart was filled with joy. On her way to school one day, Mira gave a round apple to Mr. Henry, the owner of the shop down the street. She gave a flower to Ms. Lopez, the lady with the sparkling eyes. She gave a songbird to Mr. Sachs and a red heart to the policeman who walked up and down the streets. On her way home, Mira taped a glowing sun on, onto the wall hiding in the shadows. Her city was less gray, but not much. The next day, Mira saw a man with a pocket full of paintbrushes. He gazed at the wall. He looked at her son. He held his fingers up in a square and peered through them. Hmm, he said thoughtfully. What do you see? Mira asked. Maybe something beautiful, the man replied. Then, just like that, he dipped a brush in the paint. Bam! Pow! The shadows scurried away. Sky blue cut through the gloom. The man's laughter was like a rainbow spreading across the sky. Who are you? Mira asked. I'm an artist, he said. A muralist. I paint on walls. I'm an artist too, she told him. He handed Mira a brush. Then come on. Mira dipped it in the loudest color she saw. Yowie! The wall lit up like sunshine. As the man drew pictures on the bricks, Mira added color, punch, and pizzazz. Soon, Mr. Sachs joined in. Then came others. Everyone painted to the rhythm. Salsa, merengue, bebop. Even Mira's mama painted and danced the cha-cha-cha. The whole neighborhood became a giant block party until the policeman walked up. Excuse me, he said. The music stopped. Mira put her brush down. They were surely in trouble. The officer cleared his throat, then paused. May I paint with you, he asked. So Mira handed him a paintbrush and the music started again. Teachers and papas jumped in, babies too. Mira and the man handed out brush after brush. Color spread through the streets. So did joy. Wherever Mira and the man went, art followed like the string of a kite. After they colored the walls, they painted utility boxes and benches. They decorated sidewalks with poetry and shine, and everyone danced. Together, they created something more beautiful than they had ever imagined. When their clothes were spattered with a million colors, everyone sat down to rest, except the muralist. His eyes sparkled. You, my friends, are all artists, he told them. The world is your canvas. He smiled wide, then pulled everything together in big sweeping motions. His paintbrush was like a magic wand. When he was finished, Mira added one more bird way up in the sky. Maybe, she thought. Just maybe. 
What a fun story. How nice that the whole neighborhood came together to turn their neighborhood from this gray, drab, really boring neighborhood to this really exciting, vibrant, colorful neighborhood. Wow, I wish I could live in a neighborhood that colorful. That's pretty amazing. And something else really, really amazing about this story is that it's based on a true story. So I'm gonna read you now a piece that's, um, so I'm gonna read you a note from the authors telling us about the true story. So maybe something beautiful is based on a true story. At one time, the colorful East Village near downtown San Diego, California, did not have murals on the walls, nor quotes from Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Cesar Chavez written on the sidewalks. Benches were not the works of art you can see now, and people living in the area were not part of the vibrant community that they are today. Instead, the streets were gray and drab. But one day, a husband-wife team, he an artist, she a graphic designer and community leader, moved in and transformed their neighborhood into a place of beauty. Rafael and Candice Lopez designed a plan to bring people together to create art so that their neighborhood could become a better place for all to live. They held meetings in their home to share their idea. Everyone was invited, police officers, graffiti artists, teachers, single parents, children, homeless people, and more. With the help of many, the Urban Art Trail was born and volunteers of all ages, races, and walks of life committed themselves to a common goal, reviving their community through art. First came murals entitled The Joy of Urban Living and The Strength of Women. Then the community painted utility boxes and benches, bright colors. They crafted mosaics around the trees along the streets. Raphael and Candace had noticed that in their neighborhood, people often looked down at the ground as they walked. So they painted poems in calligraphy on the sidewalks. Little by little, the entire neighborhood became a work of art and an inspiration to those who lived there. The impact of art in the neighborhood grew. Some of the painted benches were auctioned off and the money provided classes and scholarships for at-risk students who had an interest in art. Visitors came to admire Donations, big and small, came in, and what had seen, excuse me, and what had once seemed to be an impossible dream became a trademark of San Diego's East Village. The movement prompted by the Urban Art Trail spread far and wide. Communities throughout the United States have commissioned Raphael's murals, and neighborhoods as far away as Canada and Australia have implemented the model of community-based art. Maybe something beautiful illustrated by the muralist who inspired it was written in honor of Rafael and Candace Lopez and all the quiet leaders in our neighborhoods. It is an invitation to transform not only the walls and streets of our cities, but also the minds and hearts of communities. So did you guys catch that? The muralist who started painting the walls in San Diego, Rafael Lopez, is the same Rafael Lopez who drew all of the pictures for this book. That is really, really cool. And I also think it's really neat, let me quick clip back, that they have some pictures of some of the actual people painting the walls in San Diego. So here's a little girl who is painting. And then here's a woman, I, I believe that was a woman, who was painting a big mural as well. What an amazing, amazing story. And I love that story so much, so I thought we would do a fun craft today where we make our own colorful city. And I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to make a really colorful city like we see here. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to do this craft, you're going to need some paper towel or some toilet paper rolls. I have a bunch of some different sizes here. I like to have the different sizes. You can take a paper towel roll, excuse me, a paper towel tube and you can cut it up and have your grown-up help you with that. You can use a toilet paper tube, whatever you guys would like. I'm going to use this one for this building. So toilet paper, paper towel roll, as always, some glue. I recommend the liquid glue. Um, it's going to hold just a little bit better than a glue stick. Scissors. Uh, and again, ask your grown-ups for permission and help with the scissors. 
uh, let's see, I have a whole bunch of different color markers. So you can use markers, color pencils, crayons, whatever you would like to do. I have a whole bunch of different color paper. And I have some paper towels just in case I make a mess and to help me not color on the table. And I'm going to show you something that you could do with the stapler if you want to instead of the glue. It might be a little bit easier. I'm going to use the stapler for this one because it goes a little bit faster. I had to wait a really long time for the glue to dry on those houses that I already made. So I'm going to show you kind of a cheat with the stapler, but you can use the glue for this if you want. So first the thing we're going to do is um, cover our toilet paper tube with some paper. Um, you guys can see I'm reusing some old paper here, but that won't matter because that's going to be on the inside. And you can see when I go to roll it up, the plain color is going to be on the outside. So to cut out a sheet of paper to cover my tube, I line up my tube at the edge. We've done this before for a different project. We actually just did this last week with our dragon, didn't we? Or two weeks ago with our dragon. Um, now I'm going to make a little mark where the edge of the roll is. And then I can go ahead and cut all the way down and I can roll it up and make a mark where the two pieces meet. So where the two pieces, let's see, it's there. So where they overlap. So I'd want to make another mark about here and cut so that I have a rectangle. So I'm actually going to do this one in white. And what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm gonna do a little bit of a cheat with this one because it takes a long time for that glue to dry. I'm gonna take my stapler and I'm actually going to staple down my paper. That way I know it's gonna stay and not slide all over the place when I go to put all of my details on. So I've stapled it on there and now, just like before, I'm gonna roll it up. And then when I get to the end, I'm just gonna give it another staple. So I'm gonna put it a little bit further in so I'm not stapling on top. You can see it poking out there. I'm not going to staple on top of that staple. I'm going a little bit further in to staple there and to staple there. And if you have a stapler and it fits and you want, you can go all the way into the middle and do a staple there. Oh it worked uh, so you do not have to do it this way you can glue it I, like I said I'm just doing this because it takes a long time for that glue to dry so now here is the base of my house the next thing I want to do is add some doors and windows like I did to these um, so this one's got a really neat um, arch door with some um, windows this one has some fun windows with some curtains and there we go can you guys see what I drew in the window there there's a little kitty cat in that window I thought that would be really cute to make it look like a kitty cat is looking out the window and you guys can see my glue is still drying um, the back really looks like a mess so you may want to use tape or staples just in, uh, instead of this glue um, that one came out much better but you do whatever you works whatever works for you so to do the windows, I have to pick a color and I think I'm going to do yellow again for these windows. I think it makes it look like it's nighttime and the lights are shining out through the window. So I have a strip of yellow paper and I'm gonna just cut some windows. So just make some rectangles. They don't have to be perfect. I'm gonna make four, but we'll see. Um, so now here I'm gonna take a piece of scrap paper and put my windows on top of the scrap paper so I'm not writing on my table. So here's my windows. Oops. So now I'm gonna pick a color and I'm going to draw my windows. I think I wanna make more windows like this one. I like the ones with the curtains. So to do those windows, I'm just going to draw a line down the middle long ways and then a line horizontal and I'm going to do that I think for all four windows I think this house is going to have four windows the same oops all right so there's my windows are they starting to look like windows yet 
So now I can pick another color and let's see if I can do this upside down for you guys. Um, I'm going to draw some curtains. So let's see, I'm gonna come out and around and then I'm just gonna go down and then I'm gonna color that in. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Tilt it a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. Color it in. If you guys really, really wanted to get really artistic, you could like make patterns on the curtains. The sky is the limit with these projects. So here goes some more curtains. Color that in. Do that. There we go. So there's two windows. Those might be, hmm, I don't know if those are going to be the upstairs or the downstairs windows. And then let's see, I'm going to use actually a different color purple. And I'm going to make windows, I want to make curtains a little bit different on this one. I'm going to make just some curtains that hang from the top of the window. I mean, that doesn't really look like purple, but that is okay. So that's a different kind of curtain. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing for this one as well. And that marker is running out, but I think it still looks pretty cool. All right, so there's my curtains in that. And I'm gonna show you guys how I did the kitty cat in case you want to make your own little kitty cat or some other kind of shape in the window. Um, you might remember from my office building, I have, it looks like the silhouettes of people in the windows. I can show you how I did that too. So if I'm doing a kitty cat, I'm gonna do the kitty cat in one of these. And I'm sorry it's gonna be upside down for you, but I cannot draw a kitty cat upside down. So I just put a little circle for a head and then his ears. And then his body, which can kind of be like an arch shape. And then a tail. So that then, when you look at it in the window, it looks like a little kitty cat sitting in the window. If you wanted to make a person in your window, all I did was draw a head and then another kind of arch shape for the body. If you want, so there's a person, if you wanted, you could have them have their arms out doing something. You could have them wearing a hat. So just experiment with the little, with um, making all different kinds of black shapes. Um, that guy looks really strange with that hat balance on the very tip top of his head like that. Um, but there he is. <laughs> So play around with your windows, put some fun things in your windows. Uh, so now I'm gonna bring my building back and here's where my glue comes in. I'm going to put these windows at the top of my house. This one's gonna be another house, I think. And I guess this could be an apartment building too. This doesn't necessarily have to be an office. This could be an apartment building mixed in with the houses. That probably makes more sense. You don't usually have houses right next to office buildings, but sometimes. So I'm just gonna tack my windows on there, line them up so that I'm happy with them. I think that's pretty good. Maybe I'll move them up. That's the nice thing about the glue. You can kind of move them around a little bit once they're on until you have them where you want them. So there's some windows there. And then, let's see, I think I'm only gonna actually put one of these windows on. So I'm gonna choose the kitty cat, of course. So I'm gonna put the kitty cat window here because I'm gonna make a door here. So speaking of the door, I'm going to make a purple door. So I'm going to take a purple piece of paper and all I'm going to do, I really like this arch door so I'm gonna make another one of them. So I'm just going to come over here and draw another arch, put a doorknob and maybe some windows in the door. If I wanted, 
while I'm here. Uh, that doesn't really show. Well, it does actually. I'll show you what I just did in a second. Let me cut this out. Shapes like that. It's easier to take the little shape and then cut out the little shape. So I'm going to carefully cut along my lines. You guys know what I'm going to tell you. Be careful with your scissors. Make sure you have your grown ups permission and help to use your scissors. But there's my door and you can see I colored in the windows yellow so that they would match the windows of the house. So just like everything else, a little bit of glue, stick it on. That's a short door. So you know what I can do then? I can put another window. So this is an interesting house, but that is okay. You'll find all kinds of interesting architecture in cities. So now I'm going to let all of that dry for a little bit, so I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to go back to my purple. And you guys can measure this out if you want. Um, I'm not going to be that particular. I'm going to cut out a thicker strip because this is going to become my roof. And once I have that strip, the easiest way I found out to do this was to fold it in half and then bring your house over. Let's see if I do there, there we go. And then kind of put your roof on and see how it looks and where, how low you want your uh, roof to go. So I'm actually going to cut off a little bit and I'm um, cutting them all together so that both sides will be the same so that when I put this on, oops, I think I like that, that's gonna be good. Um, I know that's really hard for you to see. There we go. Um, there we go. That's kind of what it's going to look like. Um, so you can decorate the roof if you would like. Uh, I gave this one kind of like a thatched roof look, um, kind of like a cottage house roof. This one's got a whole bunch of shingles. This one took a long time to do. Holy moly. Um, so if you really like to get detail and intricate, you can do a roof like this. The roof of my apartment building is just some bricks. And the apartment building has a flat roof. My two houses have triangle roofs. I think for this one, I'm just going to do some bricks as well. So to do bricks, or actually I could probably do some shingles. So shingles would be kind of like, if you do like rustic shingles, they're gonna be a bunch of diff oops, different, <laughs> rectangles. Oops, see now I'm getting way too rustic already. But you want to make sure that they're overlapping because that is what keeps the water out of the roof. If the shingles are all overlapping, the water can't get in between. So the shingles would all overlap like this and then the top ones would overlap the bottom. So the water just runs right off. So I think I'm only going to do the one side. Actually, I could do, yeah, I'm just gonna do the one side because this takes a little bit. Um, so yeah, this is kind of an interesting look for a house, but, oops. but I like it, kind of interesting and different. I don't know of any architecture um, would actually look like this, but you never know. People get creative, architects get creative all the time. They make some really, really awesome shaped buildings. All right, so I'm gonna leave it there. Give a couple more shingles down there. So you could do that on the other side as well. And another thing that I found was really helpful and to help keep your roof on your buildings, especially when you have a triangle roof like this, is if you cut a little bit of a narrow strip of paper, doesn't matter how big it is, you can kind of eyeball it, fold a little bit in on each end 
So then you guys can see, let's go in front of the white here so you can see, there it is. I have, I folded the two ends in. So now I kind of have like a little table shape. I'm going to open up my roof. I'm going to take the, those um, folded in pieces and put a little bit of glue on those two folded end pieces. And then I'm going to glue them to the inside of the roof so that then you end up with kind of a, there you go. You can kind of see it in there. Um, this will take a little bit, a couple of minutes to dry. But then once you have that all done, that little piece in there will help your roof sit on your house. So there is my house. One other neat thing I want to show you guys that you can do if you would like, and definitely um, use your grown-ups help for this because this part can be a little bit tricky and you're going to need a pair of pretty strong scissors to do this. If you want your door to open, like you see here, I have a square door and the door actually opens and closes. That's really easy to do. It just might be a little, um, you need a little bit of strength to do it. So I have my door glued on and I'm just going to cut part of the way around the door. So I'm just going to follow the door and you're cutting through your toilet paper tube here. So that's why I said it can get a little bit tricky. It's hard doing an arch, but there we go. So I cut part way. So now I'm going to carefully bend it. So that it'll open and then there need another spot of glue there to keep my door on but there is my door that will open and shut so i am all done with my house i'm going to put it together if you want to continue to get creative like they did in the story you could draw mur um, murals and artwork all over the the walls of your houses and buildings that would be really really amazing um, but that's it so it does take a little while to make your your houses um, but I think it's a really really fun afternoon craft so maybe on like a Saturday when it's rainy and you can't go outside maybe that's when you want to do this craft and you can make a whole village or town or city so here is my whole village so far. I have some houses. I have an apartment building or an office, whichever I finally decide it is. I'm not sure. Maybe it's an apartment building. Um, but there's all of my houses. You can see they're all different heights. They're all different colors. They're all bright and colorful. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm just going to reach over, hug my hand, and lean down and say thank you guys so much. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.